Time to practice, I guess. Hey everyone, this is Caleb with T-Box Productions. And today we're gonna to be talking about your practice bag. Now most of the time when we hear practice bag, a lot of people just think, well, I'll take my bag out there and I'll throw what's in my bag a time or two. But a lot of times a designated practice bag is a handy tool. I know in my practice bag, I put in a lot of things that I throw and also a lot of things that I don't throw. And it allows me to really work on myself as a disc golfer instead of just learning the disc. Now there's still something to be said to learn a disc, but I think we can take a lot away from learning to better ourselves through throwing things that we don't typically throw. I got this idea to throw things that I don't typically throw and put them in my practice bag from Robbie C. Disc Golf. I actually got to meet with him for a clinic a little while ago and wow it helped. <clears throat> Looking into his practice bag, he had a lot of things that I know he doesn't bag and I was asking him why. He told me, well, these things can really gauge a player. No one's thrown, for example, a hummingbird that he has worked with. And because of that, well, it allows a player to gauge themselves on their form alone, not on the disc. I think a lot of times we get in the habit of throwing discs that we're so used to that it kind of limits us as a player because well, we're used to how it flies, so we can kind of get away with the imperfections in our form. But if you really start throwing things that you don't typically throw, especially in practice, you can work and hammer out that form. Now I would still recommend having things in your practice bag that you typically do throw, just that way you can still get the good repetitions in that you typically would. Um, for example, my practice bag, I carry Envy's, Nukes, um, stuff that I do throw a good deal, and you can check out what I did throw in my in the bag. But I do all this to say, you know, sometimes you need repetitions of things that you do throw, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just need to work on your form itself. And, well, there's a lot to be said for that. Working on your form is probably the biggest thing that's helped me longevity-wise in the sport of disc golf. It's allowed me to not strain my body as much, and the best way to do that is just to get field work in. In the video you're watching here, I'm throwing over and over again, and I'm gradually working my way up to distance drivers. Start off with putters, now I'm going with a fairway driver, through my mid ranges, but I'm doing this to kind of work my body up. Now you'll see here shortly kind of all what's in my practice bag and my guideline to really how to build a good practice bag. Now when you're making a practice bag, I recommend having a little bit of everything in there. A lot of putters, a little bit of mid ranges, and a couple drivers I would say. But I would also say put some stuff in there that you do bag. I have an MV that I put in there, I also have some links that I used to put with in there. A wasp, because you know I love that wasp. I've also got a stalker, which I know I won't bag. I've got a lot of options in there just so I can play around with to see what could go in and go out of my bag. Overall though, when you're making your practice bag, put in things that you don't throw and that you do throw. You know, if you don't throw a disc mania, maybe put a couple of their discs in just to try them out. A practice bag, in my opinion, is kind of your trial and error bag. It's trying stuff you want to try before you actually put it in your bag definitively. I think that's the really the key thing in a practice bag though. It's trial. That's what it is. It's for you to try stuff and for you to really work on yourself. I want to thank you for watching this video and if you like it please leave a like and subscribe, that would mean a lot. Y'all have a good day.